Namaste Kyamuni Buddha. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Kwangtri of the Buddha Journey and today is my first blog of my kind of Buddhism lessons 101 series kind of a thing. So we'll see how that kind of goes. Um, as I mentioned in my intro video that this channel is going to consist of two kinds of videos. So I'm going to continue doing the Q&A videos um, that the questions that come through Tumblr, the website, or if you comment, do whatever you need to do. And I'm also going to do this series that's kind of like the basics Buddhism 101 kind of a deal where every week I'll give a simple teaching on some basic Buddhism and fundamental foundation kind of things. And hopefully from there, as these lessons go on, we can continue and advance into more advanced stuff. So today I wanted to answer the very basic, fundamental, but kind of complex question of what is Buddhism? As simple as that question sounds, the answer is actually kind of hard to answer because depending on who you're asking and where that person is coming from, what their background is in Buddhism, what school or tradition they follow, you're always going to get different answers. But ultimately, there's really no right or wrong answer. Simply put, Buddhism is a religion, it's a philosophy, it's a psychology, it's a scientific kind of method, and it's a kind of a little bit of anything and everything. But more complex, Buddhism is really a psychology. It's a mind-centered religion that's based on eradicating the three poisons to help us um, in our suffering. And those three poisons, of course, are ignorance, greed, and anger. And until we eradicate those, or at least alleviate some of those poisons, we will continue in the cycle of death and rebirth and suffering until we're able to awaken ourselves and eradicate those from our lives. And the Buddha taught us that the main reason for suffering is desire. Desire is really this evil thing that kind of causes us to suffer more than anything else because it makes us want things that we can't have and the things that we do have, we want more of. So we're constantly in this this cycle of just continually wanting things and trying to obtain things that we only wish we can have, you know, whether it's like the most fanciest car or the biggest house or every single iPhone that comes out every single year, which I'll admit I pre-ordered the new iPhone's 6S. So I still have some desire in there in the back of my mind, but it's not a completely bad one, I suppose. <laughs> if, if you can obtain it, I suppose it's not that bad, right? But anyway. But, of course, not all desire is bad. We have to have the desire to become a Buddha, to become enlightened. So, we always have good desire and bad desire. So, of course, as I mentioned, bad desire are the desires that continu continually make us want to have things we can have or have more of the things that we do have. And that really just causes us and that kind of clouds our judgment sometimes. It clouds our mind because instead of allowing us to see things as they really are or to see things clearly we're constantly bombarded with this with this desire of just kind of wanting 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 without really seeing why we want things and that's really a difficult thing because if you sit down and ask yourself why do i really want this why do i want this new iphone why do i want a new car why do i want to have the fanciest jewelry or clothes or shoes whatever it may be and the answer may be difficult for some people, but it's really a fundamental question we have to ask ourselves. And until you can get to the core of what our desire is or why we have desire, we're always gonna be suffering and we're always gonna be constantly wanting and wanting and wanting. But on the other hand, as I said, there's also good desire. We have to have the motivation and the dedication to really ascend ourselves and make sure that we practice diligently in order to become enlightened, to become a Buddha. Because if we don't, if we lack that and we are kind of lazy with our practice, then there's no real motivation, there's no real want to become a Buddha or become enlightened. So good desire can be bad desire and bad desire can be good desire. Point is desire is there, desire will always be there. It just depends on how you make, make of it. So keep that in mind. And that is kind of really the fun, the basis of why we suffer. 
And then we also have to remember that Buddhism or Buddha was not a god. He was not a deity. deity. And unlike other religions where they kind of force you into believing into, in a god or a deity, Buddhism is kind of the opposite. There is no concept of a creator, God. So, and whenever someone asks the Buddha, you know, about God or the belief in God, the Buddha always replied that God is not really important in our practice of liberation or in our practice to liberate ourselves because ultimately we suffer because of ourselves. We are unhappy because of ourselves. There's no one in control of our happiness or in our karma. Everything's in our own hands. So there's no reason to have to kind of rely on some external source for our own happiness or for our own liberation because it's in your own hands. So the Buddha taught us that the only way to liberate, liberate ourselves is to control our minds, to kind of work with our minds and be able to really master it and know what our mind is all about. And of course, once we kind of really go into some deep meditation and contemplation and we see these three poisons and we see the things that make us suffer, it's easier for us to kind of go into this core and figure out what the exact thing in our lives make us uh, cause us to suffer. And then we'll be able to kind of either eradicate them completely or if we can't, then we at least can lessen them so it's not as bad and won't cause us as much suffering. And the Buddha never taught us that we, ha we that we should have faith in him because ultimately Buddhism is the practice of, of spiritual development, of our self-development. So the only faith that we should have in Buddhism is faith in ourselves. And there are a lot of ways to really explain Buddhism to people. There's not a really kind of one sentence or one paragraph answer to kind of explain it to people because it really is complex. It's kind of long and depending on how in depth the person wants the answer, it could take almost an hour just to kind of explain things. But ultimately, Buddhism really comes down to the practice of compassion and loving kindness. That's kind of the external source of it, right? Like we all see Buddhism as this happy, go-to, you know, peace-loving, tree-hugging kind of a thing. Like people who are into Buddhism are either hippies or bigger hippies. I don't know, right? I'm not saying that's true, but that's what kind of the, the not ignorant, but the uneducated will, would see as what Buddhism is. But of course, we all know that's not really the truth because externally it may seem like that, but once we get into Buddhism, Buddhism is sometimes really heartbreaking and it causes us to suffer because of practicing it. Why? Because Buddhism really makes us look into ourselves and it makes us kind of... Um, it makes us face our fears and face our emotions and face our feelings and our own thoughts and opinions. And some of those are really hard and sometimes it causes us more suffering because we have to kind of force ourselves onto those. But at the same time, doing that really allows us to see what causes us to feel that way. And a really great example I give to people is, you know, maybe sometimes we're, we're jealous of our sibling, you know. Maybe they're more, you know, uh, even though if they're younger, they may be more successful than us. So we have to sit down and kind of ask ourselves, why am I jealous of my younger sister? Well, the first reason could be because she's more successful. And then, you know, but why is she more successful? Okay, maybe she went to college or went to grad school, so she has a higher degree than me. Why did she have a higher degree than me? Because she worked harder. She was more diligent in her studies. She was more patient and more cooperative with her own work than I was. Why was that? You kind of ask yourselves why, why, why until you get to the very core reason. And sometimes that core reason is difficult to handle, even for ourselves. And sometimes it's really something really mundane and unnecessary. So by doing that, by constantly digging and digging and digging, you ultimately come to this reason of, oh, that's why I feel this way. And so from there, we can either come kind of work with it to totally get it out of our lives or we can kind of lessen the way we feel or the, or the way we see things or just things in our lives that we can kind of take care of. And in doing that, we lessen our suffering and we become more happier and we feel so much lighter because we don't have these negative uh, thoughts and opinions and feelings about people or even ourselves. And that really just makes us happy and makes us more at peace with, with mostly with ourselves. And so, 
the best way to kind of explain Buddhism to people is to just to show them because it's kind of hard to see things in our in ourselves as we get older and kind of mature but with other people like our friends and family they can it's easier for them to see changes in ourselves so if we practice Buddhism and we practice you know the precepts and the Eightfold Path and we practice compassion loving kindness and and all these characteristics that kind of make the Buddhist a Buddhist then other people kind of see these in ourselves they may ask oh you know, Guangdi has become, you know, more generous and more patient, more compassion towards people. I wonder why. And then if they ask you, then you can say, oh, I've been practicing Buddhism, or I've been practicing meditation, or give them a more mundane answer, whatever it may be. But that's really the best way to kind of show people what Buddhism is about, because for a lot of people, when they kind of, you know, go to a Buddhist temple, or they see a Buddhist, you know, service or ritual or something online, it seems very, you know, ritualistic. It seems very, um, you know, superstitious or adultery. And it's and it's really not that, you know, we're not, we don't go to a Buddhist temple to worship the Buddha or the statue. The Buddha never asked us to worship him. So and it may seem odd when people see us bowing to statues, but that's really not the case. We're not bowing to a statue because a statue is empty, it's not, it's nothing. It's made out of cement or bronze or plastic or whatever. So, you know, why are we bowing to a statue? And, but we're not, we're bowing to ourselves. We're bowing to our true nature, our Buddha nature. And it's kind of showing and reminding ourselves of our own humility and, and, and compassion towards ourselves and towards the people around us. So it's one of those things where you just kind of have to kind of watch out for or you know kind of correct people if they ask about that because that's really one of the really biggest common questions that come up for new people that come and visit my temples you know they ask why do we bow three times or why do we bow to buddha and so that's a great opportunity to kind of explain oh we're not really bowing to the buddha we're not bowing to the statues because he's not here anymore the statues are empty they don't mean anything they're just a, they're just they show a significance of our teacher you know he is the person that taught us these teachings so out of respect we bow to him and we bow to the dharma and we bow to the sangha but really we're just ultimately bowing to ourselves and to our buddha nature and just kind of reminding ourselves that we have the opportunity we have that quality to really become a buddha and with practice and diligence and continually you know pushing ourselves as much as we can we will also become a buddha so in Buddhism, the foundations of Buddhism, and which I'll cover in future videos, of course, covers the Four Noble Truths, a four path, Eightfold Path, uh, the Twelve Links of Dependent Origination, Karma, Meditation, and just, you know, some other, other foundation um, topics. And those are very important topics to understand, with, especially with the Four Noble Truths, Eightfold Path, Twelve Links of Dependent, or, 12 links of dependent Origination, Karma, Meditation, those five topics should be mastered before you ever move on to anything else because if you don't have a solid understanding of those topics and those teachings there's no way you'll ever be able to advance into more advanced study or any of buddhist psychology because anything um, outside of the four noble truth and Paths ultimately comes down comes back to those teachings so we really have to master those teachings and fully grasp the complete understanding of them in order to ever advance anything more um, advanced. I keep saying that, but um, so I always tell people when if you are beginning Buddhism, the very first thing you need to do besides, you know, orient yourself with Buddhism and its history is to study the Four Noble Truths. And the way and the best way to do that is to take each noble truth one at a time and practice and contemplate and study and research and do anything and everything you can for one month. So for the first month, you're studying the first noble truth. The next month, you're doing the second noble truth and so on until you get all four noble truths. And that's four months of study of just the four noble truths. And that's the best way to really go about that practice. Then after the four noble truths, of course, we go into the Eightfold Path. Likewise, we take each path for one month and study and practice and meditate on and research and do anything and everything we can to really fully grasp and master that teaching. And once you're done with that, you can kind of go into karma. And by, by the time you're done with karma, a whole year has passed 
and you can you know hopefully successfully say that you've mastered those three teachings then next after that is we can do meditation and meditation is literally a lifelong practice i've been meditating long and i've been a buddhist and i'm still you know i still have moments of failure and moments of success so it's not something you can kind of do once or twice and say oh i know how to meditate or do it once or twice and be like, oh, meditation's not working for me. No, it takes years and years and years of practice and study to really just get 10 seconds of peace. Um, even for me, for right now, it takes me 10 minutes just to get into a comfortable position and comfortable mindset where I can kind of finally meditate. And, I, and my meditations last anywhere from, from one hour to two hours. But point is, it takes time just to get to a spot where I can say, okay, now I'm meditating. So it takes another year just to kind of practice meditation, just to have a comprehensive view of how meditation and meditation practices work, especially Buddhist meditation, because Buddhist meditation is completely different from non-Buddhist meditation. You know, I think most of us know transcendental meditation, which don't even get me started. Um, that has nothing to do with Buddhism. So it's really important to practice Buddhist meditation. And we do that for a year. And once we do that, we have two years under our belt of, of, the, very, of the four very important topics in Buddhism. Once we're done with that, then we can go into the 12, no rule, 12 links of dependent origination. I always have to think about that. Um, and that's a complete year as well. So once we get all those teachings out of the way we have three years of really in-depth comprehensive study of the of the very foundations of buddhism once we're done with that then we can kind of move into more kind of advanced and in-depth in-depth uh, topics like emptiness or bodhicitta and just kind of things that are more more advanced more comprehensive that are kind of harder to really grasp especially in buddhist psychology so once we're done with those studies, then we can finally say that, okay, I have a, hopefully, a solid understanding of Buddhist basics and Buddhist foundations. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing with this series on this channel. I'll be going to the Four Noble Truths and Eightfold Path, um, and meditation, of course, and karma, and all, the, all that good stuff. So as we progress and hopefully learn together, I'm not going to stick to one subject a day or one subject a month but i will give you a very basic overview of those teachings so hopefully you can take that and apply it to your own teaching and to your own study and hopefully be able to help yourself in your practice so that is way more than what i wanted to say and talk about so i know i probably went off topic a bunch of times but that's kind of my what is buddhism answer um, i'm sure i'm missing a lot of things and i probably say more on my blog because it's, it's just easier to answer when you're sitting down and typing you're, there's more time and room to kind of put all your thoughts out there so if i miss anything i'm sorry um you can visit my website buddhajourney.net and i'm sure i have that question answered somewhere uh you can look at my faqs i know i have that answer there so if you want a longer answer or a better answer or an answer where you can kind of see it um, please visit the website and look under FAQs. That's also a really great resource for people who are kind of beginning or curious in Buddhism. That's a great place to go. I'll put that link in the description. And next week I will start with the first noble truth and we can kind of just move on with that. And hopefully we can learn something new together. So if you have any questions or would like to say anything else, please let me know in the comments or shoot me an email or ask me a question on Tumblr or on my website, whatever you want to do, I'm there. I'm almost always on email and on my phone. So I'll see it eventually and I'll get to you eventually. So thank you. Namaste Akemoni Buddha. Smile and be well. Um, so that's kind of been my go to Buddhism class lesson thing.